Uh, the variety is JB Diego, sown on the 25th of October. Um, if we if we go down into the crop and we'll just see what, what we have going on here at the moment. Uh, as you can see, the straw is very, very evident on the surface. Um, this is quite common from a mint till approach. Wouldn't be something I'd be concerned about. Um, what this will actually do is this will create massive organic matter in the soil when the worms uh, bring that into the soil and that's, that, that, that was the whole view of, of min tilling this crop was trying to build up uh, soil organic matter levels. Um, weed control was controlled in the autumn uh, through pre-emergence. Um, the product of choice in this instance was flight which is pendimethalin based. Uh, this crop received an application of four litres to the hectare and from walking around the field and walking through the field uh, weed control has been has been fantastic. The, the next big step in this crop now is only around the corner and that's our T0 application. T0s are aimed to be applied at growth stage 30. Um, the main objective of a T0 is to combine your PGR with it, which is your growth regulation, while also applying um, a low level fungicide like chlorothalonol, which will help us to time our T1 fungicide better. The number one battle any wheat grower in Ireland faces is septoria. Um, crops have come through the winter looking exceptionally well. Uh, this crop, which, which I've said already, which is mint-tilled wheat, is in, is in great condition. Um, if we're being honest, T0 applications went on to crops last year from the 10th of April onwards. This year we appear to be running two weeks ahead. What this means for septoria will be revealed over the coming weeks. At the moment, there is levels of septoria in the crop, all a bit low. Uh, this variety is JB Diego, which would not have the best septoria resistance out there. But at the same time, very, very few varieties out there at the moment are fantastic on septoria anyway. Uh, septoria as a disease will not be targeted in a big way at T0 um, for a variety of reasons. The number one reason is a triazole stroke SDHI based T0 is uneconomical. Um, our true or real fungicide program in wheat will start at T1. Uh, this is looking like it's shaping up to be approximately the 15th to the 20th of April this year. This will compri comprise of an SDHI uh, stroke triazole mix. Uh, there's a variety of products on the market at the moment containing these, uh, containing Xenium, containing Alatazira, a new product from Syngenta. Uh, Bixofen, which is contained in Aviator, there's a number of products which can be which can be used to address this. Down into the into the soil here, to me, what's what's very fulfilling to see is the worm activity which is going on. There's a lot of worm activity going on uh, in the soil here, pulling all that straw and organic matter on the surface down. What these worms will do is they'll, they'll digest all this organic material while at the same time building up that, 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 that great soil structure. Um, loads and loads and loads of worms. And to me and to any farmer, uh, that, 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 that's priceless. Worms just pouring out, pouring out of my hands, bringing all that organic matter down into the soil. Um, when you're ploughing, perhaps it's one of the one of the things you actually lose in the use of a power harrow type 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 drill. You tend to to kill a lot of these good good type of creatures. And in many respects, these are your cultivators within your soil. You know, it's amazing to think that what these worms can do by pulling all this trash down into the soil and then to convert it into that. Um, and the reason that this farmer decided to go min tilling um, a certain amount of his crops this year, like this crop of wheat after oats, was to try and just build up all this organic matter and get his worms working and let them do the cultivation for him as opposed to, as opposed to a plough and a power harrow. As you can see, the lowest leaf of the plant 
is decimated by septoria. There is no leaf left effectively. If we move on to the next leaf, septoria beginning to appear on this also and this will spread. The next leaf, very very low levels of septoria on it and the emerging leaf, there's none on this either. If we pull back the base of the plant and we'll examine for eye spot, as you can see the crop is appears to be free of eye spot at the moment but again this is something we look at closer to the T1 timing to see that we need to, to tailor our fungicide program towards eye spot. If we split the base of the plant like so, just like that, and cut your knife into the base of the plant and when you feel that little bit of pressure you know that you're at a growth stage 31 and this is evident with the node which can be clearly seen here. This is a clear sign that, that we are now at our T0 timing. There's no point walking into a field and eyeballing a crop or visually looking at it. The best technique I find to time a, to time a fungicide timing or a PGR timing is to split the base of the plant like so. As you can see when we run our knife through it, that's hollow and that's our node. Our node is now moving which means a PGR uh, incorporating Cycocell plus modus. Cycocell at a litre to a litre and a half, modus at 0.15 to 0.2 should suffice for the season. As I said already, the only fungicide which will go into the tank at this timing is chlorothalonol at a litre to the hectare. This is a multi-site fungicide. It's not a single-site fungicide, the likes of a triazole or an SDHI. Um, that's uneconomical. Uh, this crop will, that's all it needs to receive is chlorothalonol. The variety isn't, uh, isn't a big issue with mildew. A mildew side won't need to be included on this instance. The rest of the farm tends to be that bit lower in P. This particular site is quite a little bit higher in P. Uh, the product of choice which we've decided to use from a compound, compound point of view on this farm, or on this field of wheat should I say, was Oatmaster. Um, contained in this compound is 10 units of nitrogen, 5 units of P and 23 units of potash plus sulfur and plus wolf tracks manganese. Uh, the reason we decided to go a product like this was first and foremost right, was the indices of the soil um, and secondly manganese is quite a big deficiency on this particular farm. Um, the rest of the farm we tend to use a product called Grain Master which is 10 a 21 plus sulfur plus wolf tracks manganese but the P indices were that bit higher in this field we decided to go 10 5 23 plus sulfur plus manganese which is Oat Master. Uh, 10 days ago we've applied, we've, we spread the compound on this field at a rate of 4 bags to the acre. That means that the crop is now sitting on 40 units of N uh, 20 units of P and 92 units of potash along with its sulphur and also along with the addition of manganese. Our next big split coming up for the wheat will be in the form of our first true nitrogen application. The product of choice in this instance will be Supernet, 27% nitrogen, 3.8% sulphur. We aim to apply this as close to growth stage 31 stroke 32 as possible and looking at crops and looking at growth stages at the moment we're perhaps a week to 10 days away from our, from our big split of, of nitrogen on winter wheat. But yeah, uh, where possible, the, the addition of manganese uh, with the compound not only frees space up in spray tanks, uh, but also the likelihood is you're going to get out in the field earlier with your compound fertilizer rather than with a sprayer. So to me it's a no-brainer applying your manganese uh, with your compound, not letting deficiency occur in a crop. Um, my view is always, as with any crop, is be proactive when it comes to trace elements rather than being reactive.